Welcome traders to another Tick Mill Earnings Report preview with me, Patrick Munley. Before we jump into today's report, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. And most pertinent to today's presentation, the fact that the views expressed by me are solely mine, they're not indicative or representative of those held by Tick Mill UK or Tick Mill Europe Limited. Okay, let's jump into today's report and we are looking at Google. Google set to announce after the New York close today, looking for an EPS of $1.29 on revenue of $70.4 billion. Google faces the toughest comp of the year as Q2 2021 gross revenue grew 62% year over year, albeit off the pandemic hit Q2 2020 growth of minus 2%. According to a Bloomberg report, Google plans to slow hiring amid a possible economic recession. Bank of America recently cut its estimate for Google's stock, citing expectations of the US economy's growth slowing. And they are looking to lower Q2 consolidated net revenue by 1% to 58.2 billion from 58.6 billion and lowering 2023 revenues by 6% to 269 billion. They're looking to lower the Q2 EPS to $24.80 from $25.99 as they cut other income due to potential investment write downs. For 2023, EPS key for valuation is being lowered by estimates of uh, by 7% to $121.27 from $129.83 as they assume more expense growth moderation. Google reported first quarter earnings and revenue that missed Wall Street targets. In Q1, Alphabet generated 80% of revenue from Google advertising, followed by 10% from uh, Google Other, 9% from cloud computing, and 1% from other investments. Investments continue to ramp up for the company. Alphabet expects a meaningful increase in 2022 capital spending, reflecting investments in computer servers and in internet data centers and construction of office space. Google's board of directors has authorized 70 billion in additional stock repurchases. In the first quarter, the company repurchased 13 billion of Google stock versus 13.5 billion in the December quarter and 12.6 billion in the September quarter. Helping Google stock has been a rebound in digital advertising as the coronavirus emergency fades. Google aims to be a bigger player in e-commerce, such as in online travel. But macroeconomic concerns such as growing currency headwinds pose a problem for the online search giants. Under new Alphabet chief executive Sundar Pichai, Google has improved transparency. Google began disclosing cloud computing financial metrics with its fourth quarter report in fiscal 2020. But the cloud business has yet to turn profitable. In the first quarter of 2022, cloud business reported an operating loss of 931 million versus 974 million loss a year earlier. Google's cloud business plans to raise prices for some services in October. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the statistical trading patterns around Google share price uh, earnings releases. The Google shares have moved higher in the immediate aftermath of earnings seven out of 12 previous reports. On average, the stock has moved up 2.8% in the first day of trading after the company reported earnings. Based on the previous 12 earnings releases, uh, Google is more likely to trade higher one day after earnings for an average gain of 0.1%. On average, the stock has moved higher 1.2% one week after earnings. So from a volatility perspective, what are the options traders pricing in? Well, they're pricing in a 7% move on the earnings release. However, the stock has only averaged a 4.8% move in recent quarters. So from a flow and sentiment perspective, what can we glean there? Well, there's been notable buying 9,081 contracts of the 115 core expiring this Friday. However, options order flow sentiment in general has been bearish. Investor sentiment going into the company's earnings release has 47% expecting an earnings beat. Google share prices drifted down 5.8% post its last earnings announcement. Using the last 12 quarters of data, the average drift between earnings is about 3.7%. Okay, so let's take a look at the charts now and see if we can identify any near-term trading opportunities after the, uh, after the earnings announcement. And we're looking here at the weekly and the daily chart. You can see on the weekly time frame, we're in this bearish channel and we can identify a potential five wave sequence here to the downside with a wave four high at the 120 level. That gives us a minimum downside of a five equals one objective 
at $93.86. Moving to the daily time frame, we can see we're consolidating here in a bearish flag pattern. And so what I will be looking for now is whilst we hold that 114.50 as resistance on the upside, I'd be looking for a break now through the 106 level to engage on the short side, looking to take out the year to date lows at 102.50, targeting that 93.94 level. Now from there, I will be certainly paying attention to the price action. If we get a decent bullish reversal there on the daily or the weekly time frame, that could suggest we have a nice tradable local low in place. And then we could be thinking about a move back up into the high volume area at $1.14. Any loss at this stage of that 93, 94 handle would have us trading down to the, the weekly high volume node down at $87.91 as that next downside inflection point. So setup at this stage is bearish and really can't get constructive on the Google uh, stock unless we take out this weekly descending trend line on a closing basis. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.